Hey everybody, what's happening? Sammy the Thrifty Brewer coming at you and happy Homebrew Wednesday for Wednesday, October the 8th, 2014. October the 8th, holy crap. This, it's fall here in Muskoka. It was a balmy 10 degrees today, Celsius. Not Fahrenheit, for my American friends, Joe. That's for you, brother. A little chilly, so I had to turn the heat on actually in the house last weekend because uh, it was uh, seven. Whew. Burr, burr, burr. It's a better way to celebrate autumn than with a little pumpkin ale. A little bit of my exploding balls. Color is awesome. And, you know, I'll tell you what I did with it in a second after I take a sippy poo. Oh, that takes all the badness away. So there's still a slight little bit of aftertaste to it but I've masked it a little bit by adding um, a couple hundred grams of lactose directly to the keg as well as another uh, teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice and what I did is I took two cups of water uh, heated it up to boiling and added uh, the lactose and the pumpkin pie spice shook it up to incorporate and dissolve as best I could and just added it directly to the keg and put it back on gas and uh, it's created more of a creaminess to the beer which is what I was going for in terms of mouthfeel and texture but it is also masking the little bit of astringency I had as well so I'm not sure if you guys have ever done that before but that's an interesting little tip and I figured why not give it a try and see how uh, see how it goes so what's been happening in the brewery well brewing wise nothing actually um, was going to do a, a new brew day last weekend, but just ran out of time. Uh, this weekend is Canadian Thanksgiving, so it's a long weekend for me. I'll be out of town visiting my parental units in Sarnia, hook up with the Hitman, maybe hit the Refined, refined Fool Brewing Company for a couple pints, maybe pick up, pick up a growler or something. So no brewing this weekend, but the plan is to brew something on the 18th, which is uh, the Saturday. At one point in time, I'm going to try a crock pot brew, weather depending. So if it's shitty out, I can still brew in the basement and then, then in the kitchen. And if you see right here, um, I have a 16 quart crock pot that actually goes up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. And I've hooked up my STC 1000 to it from the old fermentation chamber and I've done some testing on it and uh, thrown together a recipe on Beersmith calling it a crock pot pail and uh, basically I'm going to be using my crock pot as my uh, mash tun in a, in a bag. Now I'm not taking credit for this, I know Gash has got a wicked video on it um, where he does a comparison with one of his crock pot beers versus one of his beers on his, uh, on his three tier system, or three vessel system sorry, and go check it out. I'll see if I can find the link and post it down below if I can but it's really sweet and I think it's going to give me a really interesting option for brewing and doing some really cool small batches and test batches um, when it's like minus 20 minus 30 outside and I'll still be able to do the all grain which is really neat and I've gotten the okay from Mrs. Thrifty so thumbs up for that so cheers to Mrs. Thrifty cheers to you Gash and cheers to Crock-Pot Brewing and being resourceful because that's what we are as home brewers resourceful so cheers to you guys um, SJ Poor International updates. From a Canadian perspective, I received my first um, entry from Lee Hillman out in Alberta. Um, he sent me his, uh, his brews. I've got them chilling back in the fridge there. All nice and safe and sound. I picked those up yesterday. And Lee was very kind as to send me uh, one of these called Old Embalmer Number no. 12, a barley wine ale featuring Bravo hops. Um, and this is part of a cellaring series from understand uh, from Widmar Brothers Brewing in Portland, Oregon. And this apparently is from 2000, July bottle, July 18, 2012. So um, I have no idea what the AB, oh, sorry. Yeah, 10.2 ABV. I am not going to be cracking this for a while. This is gonna be going back and cellaring um, for one of those special days. So I'm looking forward to that. So. Cheers, Lee. Thanks, brother. I greatly appreciate it. It is my absolute pleasure to be a hub for you, mate. Now, I've got a beer on the go in the fermentation chamber. 
<coughs> excuse me, that I introduced to you guys last week, um, on my New Zealand Pale Ale. Fermentation is basically done. What I did is I did ramp it up for the last four days to about 20 degrees Celsius. It was sitting at 19 for a while. I've got a little sampley poo here just off frame that you guys can see. And I'm just going to take a quick gravity reading and a sample. And this beer has finished very dry. Like we are 10... I'm going to call that 10.06. Which is... Hmm. Interesting. Because I wasn't going for that. Um, I was actually going for 10.18 after primary... And then uh, 10, 11 after secondary. So that's going to give me. That's uh, so still going to give me a five and a half percent beer, which is well within range. A little bit higher than I was actually about one percent higher than what I was going for. I was shooting for about a four and a half, maybe five percent beer, but I think we'll be all right. So I'm going to give her a taste. Now this was, <clears throat> I haven't dry hopped it or anything, and um, this will be determining whether I dry hop it, rack it into secondary and whatnot. Um, let me just save that here. And this was done with uh, Pacific Jade and Wakatoo! Wakatoo hops from New Zealand. Uh, now for what I understand, Wakatoo is essentially like a holler tower aroma hop um, <clears throat> with a 53.2 um, IBUs. So actually, estimated ABV on this, sorry, was was six. Sorry, my mistake. Looking at the uh, thing of this, so five and a half is quite respectable. So let me just get rid of that. We'll give her a taste. So color is yeah. looking at Beersmith. Color is basically bang on. Still very cloudy. It's still somewhat active, but it's interesting. I've never used Pacific Jade or Wakatu hops before. So cheers, you guys, and here's to home brewing. That's kind of neat. You get a really cool floral, like like reduced floral with a little bit of melon in there, and just a hint of spiciness. I think, and I think that's from the Pacific Jade, if I read the description properly. Citrus with some black pepper flavor, um, and it's wow, the floral aroma for sure. And you definitely get a little bit of like citrusy and melony in there, but the melon, I'm not sure where it's coming from, but. Huh. Pour it in the glass, do it up properly. It's for you, Dan. Vic Norton Brewery, sample glass. Let's give her a swirl and get a bit of a nose on this gem. Yeah, it's, it's neat. They're not crazy, like, punchy in the face hops. But that wasn't what I was going for. I was actually going for, like, a nice, sessionable, easy-drinking beer. But at 5.5%, it's going to be a little bit more than sessionable. But, hmm. That'll work. I'm not going to dry hop it. I'm going to leave it as it is. I'm going to rack it into secondary, let it clear. But I may keg it because I want to give another big thanks out. Uh, shout out to the Hitman, Nick, from Hitman's Brewhouse. First time with the kegs. I did receive my ball lock conversion kit. So I've switched this pin lock keg to ball lock. I've done pressure tests and... Everything is a groovy Tuesday. Swapped out all the O-rings, uh, new poppets, new everything, and uh, held pressure for 24 hours. So I've got a spare keg, which is awesome, which I can get, get filling. And if the crockpot thing works out, I'll be doing a lot of brewing on the weekends in the winter time because with the wife and the girls going skating on Saturdays, that gives me an entire Saturday morning to throw together, like you know four or five gallon batches. So I want to touch base on this Crock-Pot beer again because um, it's going to be a 20 liter batch and that is a 16 quart um, essentially mash tun if you will. So it is basically going to be, uh, let me just go to my equipment profiles here. I freaking love Beersmith man. Um, so my mash tun volume is essentially 15.14 liters 
and then I'll be doing a batch sparge um, with water, well, obviously with water up to temp. Um, I'm basically doing like a dunk sparge and let it uh, sit for like 10 minutes, Rot pull it out, give her a good smoke, give the bag a good mashing up and not overly mashing to uh, release the tannins, but, um, and then do a 60 minute boil um, as opposed to 90 minute boil I can normally do. And I'm thinking I can do some really cool test batches with that. And then the plan is then in the summertime, in the spring, when the snow is gone, to uh, scale it up to the other brew in the bag profile and go from there. So yeah, this is awesome. That's make temperature control fermentation chambers make all the difference. I'm telling you, if you can swing it, make it happen. Because um, this fermented at 20, or sorry, at 19. The last uh, three days, sorry, not four days, I bumped it up to 20. And now what I'm going to do, um, just let things sort of, you know, clear up a little, clear out a little bit. But I'm going to rack this into secondary, I think. Just let it clear a little bit more. Because it is quite, quite hazy. But, ooh. And on the back end, you get a little hint of pine. So it's quite, actually quite refreshing. I would love this beer. I actually knocked down to about 4%. Maybe like 3.5-4% would be a wicked, wicked, wicked lawnmower beer. Hmm. I'll fight around with that. So I'm going to cut it short there, guys, because I really don't have an awful lot of news. Um, I, prob I don't know if I'll have a video next week or not. Like I said, not a lot happening brewing-wise. Uh, Crockpot Brew planning uh, September, uh, sorry, October 18th. I think uh, Harry Brew um, may hop on Uvu. Um, I'll be online on Uvu for sure. More well, well, not for sure, but hopefully. And uh, I think Nick from Hitman's Brew is going to be there. Hopefully, uh, new to Homebrew Tom will be there. Um, as you know, when we tend to get together, things tend to get a little crazy. You know, people put vegetables on their nose, and I didn't show the footage of vegetables going in other places. Like the refrigerator. What were you thinking? Sick bastards. Anyways. Thanks again, Lee, for this beer. I'm going to sell her this for quite a while, brother. I'm so looking forward to that. Uh, I know Rob has sent out his beers to me. Um, just waiting for those to arrive, Rob. Hopefully Friday. If not, it'll be Monday or Tuesday. It'll be Tuesday when I get them. And I know that uh, Mike McNabb, third entrant, is going to be dropping off his beers to my house on Saturday which means I'll be boxing them up, sending them out here to Ashley, and then the next leg starts. So, a, you know, barring a customs fiasco or, you know, the beer gods crushing three boxes, Canada's beers should hopefully be in the mail uh, or on courier uh, middle to late next week. So, very excited. So, guys, this is Sammy the Thrifty Brewer saying, if you're going to do something, do it with some home brews. And if you can't decide to drink one, Drink the one with the smallest amount first. That's tasty. And follow it up with a little bit of exploding balls. I want to thank all my subs. Thank you so very much, guys. It means a huge amount. To oh, yeah. You can definitely get the flavor off flavors now after drinking that. Hmm. Hmm. Thank all my subs so very much. Uh, it means a lot to me that you guys are taking the time to like, watch, and thumb up the videos. It means a huge amount to me, so thank you so very much. Um, yeah, that's about it. So, if you're going to do something, do it with a homebrew. And by all means, keep calm and brew on. Cheers, everybody. And happy homebrew Wednesday. Huh. Take care. Cheers. All the best.